Hey there, rock stars. Michael Stone here, out in the beautiful nature of Mount Tamalpais. And for what other reason than you guessed it, our second Ixalan card review, part two. What? That's right, the latest Ixalan uh, set, Rivals of Ixalan, was released recently. And so I'm gonna be uh, talking today about all the newest cards, the newest additions in the set, specifically the dinosaur cards again, and um, how this set compares to the last set and how it just compares to uh, scientific findings in general. Alrighty there, so I wanted to start out with, of course, the good first, just get, get kind of the good, the good items out of the way before I really tear into, it, into this set. First one that I thought was really cool is Galta, Galta Primal Hunger, one of the elder dinosaurs, the big baddies that came out of this set here. And um, I believe it's a she, and she is um, just absolutely beautiful. Just an absolutely beautifully made card. Um, really liked the um, way this card looks. It's just really pretty. Ge and keeping in mind that the maybe the head crests and the coloration is a little bit of an embellishment here for a Tyrannosaur. It's well within artistic license and I think it looks really cool. So there you go. Second one worth noting, one of the other um, elder dinosaurs is Itali, Primal Storm. <laughs> uh, one thing that I just wanted to say about this card is holy crap. Like, 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 like just awesome it's a totally awesome card the art is just over the top ridiculous for a number of different reasons but it just looks really cool nice action shot um worth noting though that i don't think spinosaurus had feathers that's about it all right and then we have the crested herd collar now this is a just really beautiful piece again i really like the way this turned out a really cool depiction of a ha group of, of hadrosaurs. More specifically, these look really similar to a group of hadrosaurs called the Lambiosaurines, Lambiosaurus. Um, Lambiosaurus being a notable one that the internet has taken a shine to uh, within the last couple of years because of their outlandish, ridiculous head crests. So something like this is actually pretty plausible, a creature with a, with a head crest that looks kind of similar to this. Next, we have the Snubhorn Century, which just looks like some crazy made-up kind of thing. Aside from all the, the feathers and the, the, on the frill there, this is actually a very accurate representation of a Pachyrhinosaurus, which actually existed. We actually have fossils of this guy and or gal in both um, that show this um, ceratops with this huge kind of lump on the front there so it was more of like a ram instead of like a horn and it, it absolutely existed so this is a really cool example of uh, the artist for this piece of work pulling into actual findings current um, discoveries and using that to make an already awesome card even cooler lastly but not least for the um, really good side of the Rivals of Ixalan set is the naturalized card. It's just a really beautiful card. Like the perspective on that is just, it's something else. It's really cool. Kind of a side note, a little bit of a paleo rant on my end here. Humans and dinosaurs never coexisted. They never lived together. They never had interactions like this depicted on this card. And just the old um, idea of the caveman interacting with the dinosaur. And that never happened. That was never a thing that happened here. Of course, I don't need to mention that vampires and mer people don't exist either. It's just really worth mentioning and really hammering home. Dinosaurs and people never live together. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for the not so good. Um, we already did the good. Time for the not so good. Uh, cards that were not quite where they needed to be are just really outlandish and weird. Starting with the Charging Tuscadon. I really had hoped that we'd learned our lesson after the Bonded Horncrest. I really, really hoped that we'd be over that. But here we have uh, basically just a Triceratops and a Mammoth smashed together. <laughs> it's a total mashup. Not only did these animals never even live together in the same areas, it just looks ridiculous. It's just totally, totally unrealistic. It's just kind of crazy. I guess you can just kind of take anything and just add 
and just add a Don at the end of it and you got something. I'll be like, you know, a spoon, a spoon of Don, the Spoon of Don. That'll be, I'll, I'll make that, I'll make that a thing. And now it's a dinosaur. Look at that, it's as easy as that. So this one's kind of funky um, with uh, more to come. Next on the hit list is the Oraska Frillback. Um, there were a couple dinosaurs, this one included, that are labeled as dinosaurs, but they are not dinosaurs. This is a representation of a Demetrodon, which is actually closer related to mammals than it is to dinosaurs, believe it or not. Um, it's actually a very, very early ancestor of common mammals. Kind of crazy when you think about it. That's too far back in history for there to even be feathers. So Demetrodon would never have had feathers, would never have looked like this. So it's a little misleading and a little inaccurate that they labeled it as a dinosaur. Nezahal Primal Tide is another one. This is a representation of a plesiosaur. In the water, there are no aquatic dinosaurs. The only fully aquatic animals that lived in the Mesozoic, that lived when dinosaurs lived, were all reptiles. They were not dinosaurs. So Nezahal here looks really cool, but is not a dinosaur. It's actually a plesiosaur, which is a completely different lineage. So now is time for just the ugly, the absolute, just ridiculously outlandish cards that can hardly be even considered dinosaurs anymore. They're that ridiculous. First and foremost, and most notable, is the comma primal calamity. <laughs> like, this is a three-headed Cerberus Tyrannosaurus Rex. And I can't even believe that those words just came out of my mouth. <laughs> You've got, um, they even thought of something like this. How does this even work? I can see that there's clearly two heads that are attached, but what's that third head doing? It's, I don't even know, is it floating? Is it even like, like fused to the body? How does it work? How does that even, that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Like it's just too absolutely ridiculous, even for, for, for like, for, like, I don't know. I have, I have no words for this. It's totally crazy. The uh, next one on the hit list is Tetsamok, Primal Death. Looks like they took a, a Triceratops, an Ankylosaurus, and a Porcupine, and just stuck them all together. Now, lastly, and certainly leastly, on my list, is the Frilled Death Spitter. <laughs> this card has a number of problems, very problematic. The first of all being that it is very blatantly a copy of the Dilophosaurus from Jur Jurassic Park, which wouldn't be that much of a problem, except that it's completely wrong. Dilophosaurus was a carnivorous dinosaur, lived in the uh, Jurassic, I believe, the early Jurassic, and Dilophosaurus did not have a frill and did not spit venom out of its mouth. The Jurassic Park um, a vision of that dinosaur is, has been completely overblown to the point where everybody attributes that dinosaur with the spitting, the venom, and the thinging, and it's just not accurate. It's just not good at all. Wizards of the Coast, honestly, I thought you were better than this. I thought, I thought we'd come a long way. Yes, it has feathers, but at what cost? At what cost? Think of the dinosaurs. Think of the dinosaurs there. And with that, that's it. That's the end of uh, my review here, the end of, end of the talk. Also, as a side note, um, the uh, hike today has all been Cataract Falls close to Mount Tamalpais in California. All of the rocks today, the rocks that you've seen today, uh, are all very similar to rocks that you may have noticed from one of my previous videos. And they are all greenstone. All these rocks around me, all the rocks that you've seen today, all been greenstone basalt. I talked about in the Marin, Head Marin Headlands um, videos there. What's actually happened here is that in Cataract Falls, these waterfalls here have formed, they actually cut down through the gray wacky sandstone. On the trail all the way up here, you can see the gray wacky sandstone, and as you get closer to the falls and the creek, you'll see it hits the basalt. And that's because the basalt is a more um, sturdy layer, tougher. 
than the sandstone there. And so it ends up forming this barrier where the river um, can carry through, it can end up forming these major cascades, beautiful, beautiful waterfalls that you've seen today. Pretty cool. Bet you didn't think I would be talking about uh, geology today, but there you go. And let me know if you like this video. Please feel free to give me a thumbs up, a like, and a comment. And, um, and uh, let me know what you think and what you'd like to see me review next time. Until then, take care, rock stars. Rock on, and I'll see you next time. Bye.